growing food. This is a red tomato. Well balanced, well shaped. No taste. No flavor. Maybe the bit of residue of pesticides. It's a good example and symbol of our food industry and the way the agrosystems works. Well, here you have industrial farming. Destruction of the soil, pollution of the air, pollution of the water, very bad produce. Do you know that in Europe, endocrine disruptors accounts for more than 126 billion a year. This is to say cancer, Parkinson's diseases, obesity, infertility, diabetes. We are what we eat. Bad news. So we have to change the issue. This is becoming a waste. Waste accounts for up to 50% of what we produce and what we storage, including in our fridge. That means that we can't afford it. That means that we have to invent another model. One that is economically feasible, ecologically sound, and healthy. For that, we have to be grounded on the floor. That's the reason why I very oftenly go barefoot. So I want to explore an alternative. The alternative could be micro-farming, and I think we have a lead there. Micro-farming starts from my use. I was brought up in Normandy, and to give you the roots of my involvement, that started with a head gardener that told me three things. Producing food is autonomy. Sharing the one that you don't use and taking that to the people that need it, it's a very strong social link and very powerful. Preparing a meal, cooking all together, is a fantastic experience. From there, I became a banker. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. I'm sure there are no bankers here. We'll come back maybe to that later. But, 25 years ago, leaving investment banking, India, Latin America, I bought an estate in the Loire Valley and started to plant hundreds of vegetables and fruits. This led me to plant tomatoes, 10, 30, 100, today it's 600, and it is recognized as a national tomato conservatory. Well, this is very powerful diversity. But that led me to discover two things. First, the food industry had no clue about this diversity. They ignored it. They were trapped in this little round, red, well-shaped, with no taste sort of production. Two, the seed companies, they only wanted to patent the living, the evolution, what should be free for people to grow their food and share it. Nonsense. How to change it? I thought, there is one thing that can change the world, education. So I bought in 2001 the oldest natural science company called Terol, the one that were famous for the chance that where all over the world, 120 countries, on zoology, botanic, chemistry, physics, explaining the earth to the youngest. Later, in 2007, I discovered that we should go ahead and do a whole series on how to preserve the earth, which meant des rôles pour l'avenir, des rôles for the future, and join Maxime de Rostelan, an engineer in environment with a lot of convictions, like I guess I have, and we both question ourselves about many different aspects. The collection was on waste, water, energy, microcredits, and all social issues. But then we said, agriculture. How come we come to a situation where another figure? In the 40s, to grow one calorie of food, we needed a half a calorie of fossil energy. Today, to grow one calorie of food, we need seven to 10 calories of fossil energy. 
It's ridiculous. It's insane. Back to be a banker. You'll be a farmer. You'll come on the stage and you say to the banker, I want to start a farm. What would you do? Well, I would ask, what is your business model? And you would say, very simple, my business model. I'm going to degrade the soil, destroy the ecosystem, pollute the air, pollute the water. I'm going to sell under cost, leave on subsidy. I'm going to be in debt. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to sell things that are going to be sick for the people that are going to eat them. See this one? Maybe I'll commit suicide at the end of the day. This is the model we have exported for the last 60 years. Check on the website. It's terrifying in growing countries. So we had to think of a, an alternative model, soft in energy, getting the people together, not letting anybody behind. And we explored different sorts of farming, agroecology, and we discovered an inspiration called permaculture. So we said we have to start from scratch because all what we saw were you know, the horizon of success with amazing fields. So from scratch, we found 1.4 hectares next to the Tomito Conservatory in La Bourdesière, and we planted on prairie. Why on prairie? Because it's flat, there's nothing that has been there before, and we could measure every step towards something. So something is next door, it's only Six months later, we planted 3,000 square meters. The year after, 2013, 2014, sorry, there was 6,000 square meters. 500 different plants. 500 times more than conventional farming, industrial farming. So that was a glamorous time. But we said to ourselves, we need a business model. So we registered an association, an NGO called Ferme d'Avenir, Farm for the Future. And here we said, we're going to study a business model. Within four years, we have to make sure that it's all at the equilibrium. First year, we're going to employ two farmers, second year, three farmers. Within four years, with investment of less than 100,000 euros, we're going to produce 100,000 euros. I mean, it's not the cost of a tractor as investment. But for that, we said, business model, we have to go to something else. What else? In the land of what else? Well, basically, we had to find indicators. Before I go into these indicators, let me summarize a few words. Micro farming, small farm that you can put up even in a city because nobody cares for some of the lands that economically doesn't seem like being cultivated. Agronomy and agroecology. Well, combining symbiosis of plants, you know, with the one using the other ones. For example, the basilic is going to help against predators for the tomato. Natural evolution has done that. Permaculture. I like the words of Bill Morrison, the founder of permaculture. He says, working with nature and not against nature. Cooperation rather than competition. That's a philosophy, that's an art, a design. We talk about design because we talk about designing ecosystems that are self-sustainable, resilient. Caring for the people, caring for nature, sharing. This is the philosophy of permaculture. So we, th we thought the four indicators that should be aside are going to be the externalities. So you're going to ask me what externalities? Positive, negative? This is a negative externality because this you have to pay if you're sick, you go to the doctor. If you destroy the earth, you have to pay for the replacement and the depollution and the aggradation of the soil. That's brutalized. We all pay for it. You all pay for it. We pay for it. So we're going to study agronomy. That's production per surface. That is in protein crop per hectare. That is also another indicator, ecology. Ecology is obviously the biomass performance, the number of species cultivated on an hectare, the rotation, the input, and basically the irrigation avoided, but also the filtration of water. Human health, we talked about it, zero pesticide per hectare. Education, very important. How you get all generations together. You get the schools uh, on, on farms, you get people connecting themselves on the farm, you train people on the farm. Jobs, how you create direct and indirect jobs, and local economy. All that, at the end of the day, 
is to make sure that reproduce and we transform and we recreate an economy of its own locally and we make sure that people want to live in places where the land case is beautiful and then they can get proper food. So that is local economy. Now, the big question is, where was it the, what were the, the figures which, which were amazing? Few of them that we're working on because the whole idea that we have a scientific committee that is also treating social issues as well as ecological issues. And this committee is there to try to put a value to the externalities. But the other figure which was mind-boggling for us were the number of people that got interested to put up farms like you, cities, individual companies. And came along these experiment, first experimentations are very large institutions. The Europe and the Région Centre have been financing the educational program. The large corporations have been financing the farm. The one that you see here, which are the agribusiness or the financial people, financial world. And what do they say? We want to understand one thing. How does it work? We want to finance the toolbox. What is the toolbox? The toolbox is exactly what you are asking in your mind. What do we have to do to achieve a farm in our territory? To be trained? To get the finance? To get the planification of crops? To be helped to do the selling part of it, the marketing part of it, and all the stupid details which are going to take a lot of time. So these companies are trying to understand what is going to be the change with the local agriculture, with the way we consume. So with Firm Davnir, we said, well, with Maxim, how are we going to be ambitious? Why do we have to be ambitious? Simply because we've all heard about what COP21 said. COP21 in December gave an objective very clear. We have to limit the emission of carbon dioxide by two degrees, by one and a half degrees, and it has to be very quick. There was another report called the Shift Project in France as how to tackle the climate change. And the first one was decarbonate the economy. Decarbonate the economy is decarbonating the agriculture. The agriculture accounts in France for more than 33% trans cultivation and transport of the emissions of carbon dioxide. So how do we do this? We have to create more and more farms. But then we have to understand that the famous externalities we were referring to, we have to put a price. Why CT companies, individuals will start a farm if they say, well, it's not going to make enough money? And that's where we have to address a very strong message to the decision leaders, to the politicians, and saying, yes, if this is degrading the soil, if this is degrading the ecosystem, we have to put a value on that. We have to say that if we produce 100,000 grants on the farm and the positive externalities are worth 150,000, well, this has to be put into accounting because that's the only way we're going to fight the idea that the negative externalities, we pay for that and we don't discuss about it. So with Ferme d'Avenir, Farm for the Future, we are trying to put up a way, a gimmick, so when you start a farm, around you start six, seven other farms, up to 10 farms, and for each and every single farm, I mean, groups of 10 farms, sorry, you would have an individual entrepreneur, we call him a payculteur, the one that will cultivate your territory and help all of the other ones, the small growers, to tackle their problems of finance, of training, of planifications, of selling things, and of course, of succeeding in their work. So now you wonder why I threw this tomato away. This tomato, as for the words of Bill Morrison, is a problem. But he says very genuinely, the problem is a solution. And I say, planting, and you should go for it, is a political act. Planting a garden, planting an orchard, is for the future, it's for food resilience, it's for the next generation. Thank you. <laughs>